Shy people. They went to fight Matani, who was the ancestors of the Greeks, who are white people. So he conquered them. He's getting tribute from all over Mesopotamia, all over the Aetian. See, you see what I'm saying? Tutmos the third and Katmus and the biblical Moses seem to be the same thing. So It says that the tombs of high officials of the reign are decorated with scenes depicting the reception of foreign envoys coming from places as far away as the Aetian and the Greek mainland to lay their rich and exotic gifts at the feet of the pharaoh. The prestige of Egypt had never been so high. Mm. The adornment of Egypt, the new prosperity was reflected in the remarkable program of building undertaken by the king's architects. The temple of Amon at Karnak is particularly, in particular, was enlarged and enriched by many new buildings and a number of obelisks. Two of the splendid granite obelisks that he erected there are now in Istanbul, Turkey, and Rome, in Italy. Of the two now known as Cleopatra's Needles, with which he adorned the Temple of the Sun God at Heliopolis, one in New York City's Central Park and the other on the Thames Embankment in London, England. During his reign, art and craftsmanship received new impetus from his patronage, the exotic birds, beasts, and plants that he brought back from his campaigns in Asia are depicted on the walls of his festival hall at Karnak. Among the gifts sent him from abroad were a live bear, an elephant, a giraffe, and birds that give birth each day. Probably domestic hens, which were rare in the Middle East at that time. During the last year of his life, feeling his strength failing, Tutmos appointed his son a head. Amenhotep uh, II, the son of his second wife, Hapshatsu's daughter, Mary Yetri, as co regent. He died in 1426 BC. He was laid to rest in a remote corner of the Valley of Tombs of the Kings in western Thebes. Along with many other royal burials, this tomb was later looted by robbers. The mummy of the pharaoh was one of those discovered in 1889 in a hiding place where the priest kings of the 21st dynasty had hidden them for safety. Of the rich furniture that must originally have been placed in the tomb, only a few fragments were found. His mortuary temple, which was built on the terrace at Deir al-Bahari, beside that of Hapshatsat, was discovered in 1962. Nearby the burial place of three members of his harem was found. Judging by their names, they were Syrian princesses. And though of minor rank, their jewelry and equipment were extremely lavish. All Of all the kings of ancient Egypt, Tutmosis III is perhaps the one who, for the modern historian, most nearly comes to life. His records... Though couched in the boastful and extravagant terms for befitting a pharaoh's exploits, leave little doubt not only of his ability as a soldier and a statement, statesman, but also of his abilities as an athlete and a hunter of a lion, wild cattle, and elephant. From his mummy, it is known that he was a small man, not above five feet three inches in height. His statues show a resolute face and a large high bridge nose and pleasantly smiling mouth mm. that's a picture of him right there mm -mm. Tutmos the third mm -mm. not like the white man they portray him to be in the movie the exodus in hollywood he looks nothing like that so, his fame lived after him. His name inscribed on countless amulets was thought to bridge, I mean thought to bring power and protection to the wearers. A popular hymn celebrating his triumphs become a model for later paeons of victory. It, in it, the God Amon says, I set thy glory 
and the fear of thee in all lands, and the terror of thee as far as the four supports of the sky. The rulers of all foreign countries are gathered together within thy grasp. I stretch out my hands to bind them for thee. Mm. And that was the biography. There is no separate life of Tutmos III. His career and achievements are described in some detail in general histories. Mm -mm. Such as... Mm -mm -mm. You know... I'm going to start right here. This sounds like the biblical Moses. Mm. And it, it's kind of sort of what the Greeks were talking about in the cat moose myth. Mm. You got to look at the Greeks and you can't trust what the Greeks say that much. I mean, but you can look into in the Greek mythology about cat moose. What I do see is the parallels mm. of him going to conquer Phoenician coast. He came from Phoenicia. And conquered Mitanni, which is the ancestor of Greeks. And he got tribute from all of the countries round about because he had conquered them all. And just like the last part says, the fear of Tutmos was all in Hepin, at the four supports of Hepin, all at the four cardinal directions. They knew about him. So I guess that's why they got those four obelisks mm, that he uplifted. Mm -mm. One in New York City, one in Thames in London, England, one in Istanbul, Turkey, one in the Vatican in Rome, okay? Because those are the lands he conquered in the ancient world. A black man was Moses. Mm -mm. Not that white man in Hollywood. That's all I want to say mm -mm. on that note. Mm -mm. That's Tutmos right there. Mm -mm. Can you dig it? Mm -mm. Sucker. Mm -mm.